Slotcast, Slotcast, Slotcast. It's a question. Do we need an intro? Yeah, yeah must be intro. Didn't you just hear it? I know it sounds like 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 we have just sung that, but we played <laughs> it. We played it. Want to play it again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again. Super. Nice. Maybe just the first two seconds. Okay. Again. Lord God. Lord God. Thanks. Cool. Um. <clears throat> so. Nice episode. This is our tenth episode. This is an anniversary. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lord God. <laughs> okay, you guys at home, sing along. <laughs> I, I just I just can't get this melody out of my head. Look, it's it. It's it. We should write a song. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we have some some topics actually created by you. In news, we are on the Sonic Seducer. Look, look. The thing we didn't speak about last time. I mean, let, let's let's. Was, uh, it, was it out last time? I don't think Sorry so. that I interrupted our uh, but, topics. But, <laughs> but let's hold the cover of the magazine to the microphone. <laughs> so everyone, everyone can hear it. You hear Chris's printed face. You heard it. Yeah. Okay, we have some topics created by you. Actually, um, a lot of them, but we can't. Yeah, but, 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 but we have chosen some. Yeah. What, what, what do you think? What do you want to start with? The songwriting stuff, the uh, note aufnahme, whatever it means in English, the questions, the serious questions, or the other bands on tour. I think note aufnahme breaks the ice. Okay, then yeah. let's then please tell me what's the word for note aufnahme. <laughs> emergency room. <laughs> emergency room. <laughs> emergency room. <laughs> I just try to <laughs> to relax the muscle in my arm. Yeah. I Did know. it look like like a like a Hitler cruise? Yes. Oh damn it! I'm I'm so sorry. But I, that's a topic we we can get to later. Oh, but but I'm happy there's no camera. You know, I just tried to relax my arm, but I looked like I was doing like this, you know, old school German kind of greeting thing with the hand, and I'm really not um, the kind one of one of those uh, people. <laughs> Okay, uh, you wanted yes. to know stories from emergency room, Notaufnahme. If we ever... I never met George Clooney there, though. No, me neither. Why would you meet him there? You're really too young to know that, right? Yes. This, this was like uh, George Clooney's uh, big starter, a uh, TV show called uh, Emergency Room. Mm. This is where the ladies were like, oh, he's so attractive. And he had this gray hair, like, already. When and he, he is. Kind of, yeah, he is. But he had already had, like, gray, gray hair on his, uh, what's... Uh, sides. On his Schleife. sides here when he was kind of young. So this was mm -hmm. one of the reasons why that became sexy again mm -hmm. to women. And boys sometimes. <laughs> well. well. And, um, emergency room. Emergency room. Okay. Now I don't know. I don't... So our stories, funny stories, mostly How we funny. got to the emergency room. Mine are not really funny, but... Uh, Mine is funny. Okay, then do start with a funny one. Okay. Um. <laughs> no, it was a Saturday evening and I was at my place and, and I invited a friend of mine, long-time friend, and we uh, played Street Fighter and we played it quite competitive <laughs> you know like if, if you lose you, you, you just get get kind of angry frustrated and then try to get better and his frustration level raised up super high so uh, he just was angry and he was some kind of karate kid in the past and he used his uh, flat no his Hand counter. The side of the hand. Side of the hand. The karate hand. The karate hand. Yeah. To really <laughs> to focus all his anger into the the side the armrest of the uh, couch. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? And boom! And then his hand hurt so much 
and it was swollen after a couple of minutes and it <laughs> yeah two <didn't>, hands <laughs> and it didn't stop hurting it was so horrible that we just thought like okay i bring you to the emergency room to george clooney and it was on a saturday night like one 20 saturday in the morning night? or something after a couple of beers or sober? no <laughs> no 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 we've been sober i think and uh Think. Yeah, then we've been in the emergency room. I played Magna Doodle. I don't know if this is international, like these kind of board to draw on it and then you just erase it. By oh, I think it's Magna Doodle. And yeah, and uh, we found out, or the doctor found out, that his hand was simply broken by <laughs> uh, freaking out after losing in Street Fighter. So, Street Fighter is kind of a dangerous game. Yeah, and the thing was, he was about to write his. Uh, tests for studying and everything but he couldn't so uh, he postponed at least one semester or something because he was not able to do the tests and shit. one semester yeah i think something shit. like that yeah. just because of street fighter yeah because if not controlling your anger please usually there's no reason to completely freak out and lose yourself and risk too much good things in your future just Just don't hit the armrest of the couch. Yeah, just breathe. Start breathing and relax. I will I will throw a little funny story in between because some, one story came up, but I was actually, as you, only like accompanying yeah, someone. Right. Yeah. It's like, um, I can't tell the name, but it's like lots of names, lots of names, lots of years ago, many years ago, I was with that girl and I just met her. And um, we, we've been to to a club in Hamburg where we were partying back then all the time, a headbangers ballroom. And she was like super, 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 super drunk and kind of wanted to grab a beer from uh, down there in the fridge. And there were like some broken beer bottles and she... she, she mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, she kind of really hurt her arm, hand, I don't remember. I was pretty drunk as well, and so she was like bleeding, it was all open. So we had to go to the emergency room, she was like super, super drunk. So when we got there, like talking funny to the doctor, like, hey, 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 and trying to, yeah, mm. kind of manage the pain and the attempt of not throwing up for two reasons, like <laughs> seeing blood plus being drunk. And... While uh, the doctor just sew, was sewing her hand, she was like throwing up into the trash bin beside that. Um, <laughs> that is so a bench. Or beside, yeah, I was sitting there holding her hand. Uh, she was like half puking over my knee and still laughing while puking. And I had to laugh. And so we went home. Then in a taxi, like full of blood and vomit and beer. And, um, yeah, hmm. that's it. But she went well with her hand? Yeah. Okay, good. Mm. Nothing serious, but uh, <laughs> it was really, really rock and roll. Yeah. Mm. It must be like, I don't know, 12, 13 years, I don't remember. Yeah. Speaking of hands, I was... Um, at the emergency room once because um, also a party story I was partying um, with some friends in my hometown when I was young uh, um, and a friend of mine approached two girls um, that were having a conversation and he stood between them and wanted to talk to one of the girls and while doing so he apparently touched or I don't know what He did. He touched somehow, without meaning to, I think, the te the teat, nice, <laughs> the teat of the other girl, nice, that he didn't want to talk to, nice. that he turned his back to, nice. That particular girl <laughs> didn't actually like that, and coming back to Street Fighter, went full on, <laughs> went full on Street Fighter on him. She was only I don't know five feet tall or so, so she couldn't reach his face because he's very tall. But she was like trying to beat him up really trying she was furious because she was drunk as hell and so we pulled our friend away it was the same girl 
Huh? Maybe it was the same girl. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> we, we pulled our friend away and wanted to leave, but she, keep, she kept following us. She was like running after us <laughs> in her rage mode, trying to beat one of my friends up, the other friend. Um, actually hit one of my friends in the head and he was like, had a swollen eye. <laughs> and when I got to her and tried to, I don't know, grab her arms to stop her from punching everyone, she somehow got to my left hand. But you didn't touch her boobs? Like, I don't think so, no. Okay, good. But I tried to, try to... Otherwise you'd be dead by now. Yes. <laughs> I tried to put her arms behind her back to like fix her some somehow. But she kind of, so for some reason, got to my hand and bit here under the thumb. <laughs> under the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't notice it until a friend of mine was like, um, your shirt is red. And it was a white shirt before that. And I was like, huh? Huh? Because I was drunk as well. Like, Typical red at, shirt. Yeah, looked at, looked at my hand and it was open from, I don't know, it was like three to four or like, yeah, four centimeters in my head were open. Are you sure there was a human girl? She didn't act like a human girl. And then instead of rushing to the emergency, uh, emergency room immediately, I was very angry at her. It was the only time in my life where I really wanted to punch a girl. That was not cool. <laughs> That was not cool. And our friends like, no, you go into a taxi into the emergency room. And when I was at the emergency room, they were like, oh, what happened? Did your dog bite you? No, a girl bit me. And I uh, like, no, that was a human. They were like, oh, tell us the story. And I was like, could you help me, please? <laughs> it hurts. I'm drunk. I don't know. It might be infected, but it wasn't. And I don't even have a scar. No, oh, but do you want to die with the... <laughs> but yeah, that was my story of an emergency room. I got bitten by a girl. Yeah, I have one one uh, short series one about. Yeah, you, you all know. Most of you know that my finger mm -hmm. got injured like one and a half years ago. It was a Thornstar tour, I think, uh, fall 2018, mm -hmm. second weekend of the tour, like the night before the fourth show or something. And um, I don't want to tell any details here but I reached the bus and something happened and something like really sharp like sharp like and heavy like an axe or even heavier like <laughs> fell and I couldn't from from the top and I couldn't rush back and it kind of kind of luckily just hit my finger mm -hmm. and then hit my shoe and stopped like half a centimeter before my uh, big toe it was super heavy. If it would have gotten like a couple of centimeters closer to me, I would have lost a couple of toes. So it was only that finger. So my finger got like slit open and the tendon got uh, cut in half. And I don't actually really... Was someone... Were you there? I have just... I was there. I was in the bus. And when I got out wondering why we're not leaving, you were there standing with... Blood all over your hand. Because I, I, I'm not really sure how I reacted, but I just remember that someone offered me to come with me to the hospital, someone of the crew I wasn't so close to, and then I was like, no, 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 I want Benny and Manu, our tour manager, come with me, and uh, our sound guy and our tour manager. And, um, because I just moved my hand and I tried to move the finger and I, I, I did not feel it anymore, and I, so I couldn't move it. So I kind of tried, I saw it was like the finger was open, it was like a super clean cut and a huge red line on the finger, around the finger, and I could like um, open it and, and I could see the bone. Ooh, nice. And I was like, okay, that's heavy. <laughs> and that's the thing. So there was like a short discussion with the bus driver, I think our tour manager was speaking for me like, and that was the decision. So we were like, I had to wait at the hospital for, it was emergency room for like two, three hours. I got hurt like half past 10 and I got my uh, emergency surgery like, I don't know, two in the morning or half yeah. past one. And we waited until the last minute 
before we would be very late which at was the venue. 3 a.m 3 a.m until 3 a.m yeah. yeah because you guys they you had to go to nuremberg yeah which is like <laughs> far away a bus is only allowed to drive 80 kilometers an hour which is like 50 miles per hour because of the trailer and stuff so this was, and with all the breaks in between was like a, a I don't know an eight hour drive mm. easy so this was like the very 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 latest because you should have been there at 11 in the morning latest uh, bec- then they told me in the hospital yeah it's all done now it's all cool but maybe going on tour is not a good idea but if you go to a doctor every day you can go but you need to be here tomorrow at eight <laughs> we got to re-explore your finger was like well what does re-explore mean in german was like explorieren so then what what, what does explore mean in this case and we're like yeah, yeah we open it again it's like oh dude mm-hmm. so i was i i went home alone with my car because <laughs> we were driving to the hospital in my car but benny was driving manu was there but manu and benny they had to go back to the bus to go to nuremberg and I was driving home in the middle of the night to my car, knowing I have like two and a half hours of sleep, then come back to the hospital, then they open it up again, and then the, I might have a chance to go on tour, like within, I don't know, 800 took, kilometers yeah. away. You took the train. I took the train, <laughs> and because you, I took, the, I took a train at like 10 in the morning, because they let me go, and I was there earlier before you guys because the bus got stuck in a traffic jam in the morning. Yep. <laughs> so yep. We had sound check together so everything was normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I had like I, I played a show under the influ- influence of like the most heavy painkillers. <laughs> that was great. And like, <laughs> like always holding my arm up because of the blood. Yep. And people were like waving. I was like, no, I'm just holding my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't play guitar. So we had to rearrange some things on the fly. Worked. Yeah. It worked. And Jared took out all this, I don't know, fifth hand. <laughs> yeah. And the camera. See, it's the first topic classes already. I'm tired. No, I just, I think this is the first beer in. In one day. <laughs> <laughs> this no, is the first I can't even remember. Today. I think I, I, okay, I had a glass of wine like a couple of days ago. A but glass I, of wine. But that's not beer. No, right. But wine uh, is not beer. Oh no, I drank a beer at Nick's, but probably the, the pizza we had was for me more because I had slices with the others as well, mm. and then the beer. Okay, let's out. let's please talk about socks. What kind of socks do you have today? That socks. I'm boring again today. I just no, got. What's up? What? what? <laughs> no, no it's, it's, it's about the socks, not about. Oh, the... right. I got like <laughs> navy dark blue uh, Füßlinge, like. Footlinks. Footlinks. <laughs> <laughs> Ankle free socks? Yeah, right. Those sneaker socks. Sneaker socks. Those, those sneaker pink. hipster super. In dark socks. blue. Mine are black. Mine are. Uh, yeah. Leopard. Print, but you wore them last time as well. Oh, I did. I think so. Okay, but I changed them between between left and right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an orange, turquoise, uh, black, green, Leo print style. Yeah, and that's when Klaas said, "Isn't that a cheetah?" Oh yeah, that was the last episode. Not cast. All right. It's not cast. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your boxers. What are you wearing? I want to come back later, but okay. Sorry. I'm wearing a blue camouflage bit of denim kind of diesel uh, okay. tights. No, what is it? Tights? Boxer, boxer briefs. Boxer, boxer briefs. Okay, let, let me let me describe yours and you describe mine. Okay, cool. P is wearing a dark blue to black, very simple Tommy Hilfiger brief with a Tommy Hilfiger lettering and red, blue and white lines. It, it looks a little like, you know, the, this old school German flag. That's not, <laughs> it's not very nice. No, it's but it's not. a bit like a sailor charm. Yeah, thing. a bit. <laughs> what about your right arm? 
Okay, now I describe yours. Chris is <laughs> <laughs> Chris is wearing boxer shorts. He likes it loose around the balls, and it is white. <laughs> it's white with red little hearts on it. Yeah. It's kind it's, of is it satin or something? Oh God, no! <laughs> That's fucking cotton. Oh, okay. You want to you want to touch it? No, it's fine. I'm yeah, you see it. I mean, I, I really like the like how satin feels, but walking around in like like satin boxer shorts all day. Yeah, it's kind of. A bit sweaty. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's not very breathable fabric. Yeah, and I think like like the jeans would like move like woo, 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 all, <laughs> yeah, all the time just... because it's so super smooth mm. around your balls. I think I need to go to the bathroom. Mm. Please take your so. time. <laughs> uh, take your time. Uh, next topic. Mm -hmm. Give it to me, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you read my? Uh, I can read those two, but what is this? Tour. Andere. Bands of Tour. Ah, Andere Bands of Tour. Yeah. So what, what do you want to do next? I stop and you say. Stop. Okay, uh, okay. interesting story. You, you asked us like about creative processes, maybe from the songwriting camp we just had. Of course, we can't tell you any details because that's for the album which is coming next year. Yeah. But are there uh, any things you remember that might be interesting or funny or weird? <coughs> Corona. Um, Corona. From the songwriting camp that we just had a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Mm. I mean, it sounds kind of arrogant to say it, but yeah, we wrote a shitload of songs. And a shitload of songs are actually be are actually on that new album. Probably. Yeah, we wrote like we, we kicked some out or we kicked some out. We yeah. kicked some out slash gave them to other artists. Not because we think they're bad. Sometimes they just didn't really fit. There was one song which we really liked, like really liked at the camp. But a couple of days later, we realized it's not a lot of lost. So this is already a Scarlet Dawn song now for. Yeah, next year or something. Yeah. But I. But we wrote. We we are producing twenty five ideas now, and we had like five or six more. So it was like more than thirty songs. Yeah, and that that is crazy to me. But I think this is because we all were had a very very strong idea of where it's going, or we have a very strong idea of where it's going and. It was very clear um, to us how it should sound like, even in the demos, I think. Yeah, and interesting was that even more we knew how we did not want to make it sound. Mm -hmm. So we, we had like things that were literally forbidden in the sound design. Yeah. And on, of course, songwriting is not necessarily combined with sound design, but if you limit yourself to certain kind of ingredients, different things happen, of course. Right. And this was super interesting. Just, just to give you one, one thing that we can talk about. For guitar sounds, we decided not to use the regular amplifier sounds, sounds that you would like consider to be rock or metal, uh, which you think is yeah you know part of hard music the mainstream metal tone is yes yeah. so so we were like we're just using this new brand new plasma pedals by game changer audio which are which is a new kind of distortion which is made through actual plasma tubes it's high voltage distortion which sounds super weird if you use it in a softer way it sounds a little like Jimi hendrix 80s kind of style if you use it like very hard, it gives you a hardcore industrial, super industrial nine inch nailsy distorted sound, somewhere in between, it's a little more muse. But we found a way to use it in our own way, which just sounds just dirty and fucking brilliant at the same time. It, it, it just sounds like something that I think I've never heard before. Yeah, and the thing is, you you cannot really play 
uh, like you're used to playing on a guitar. You know the typical thing for you non-guitar players out there doing this da 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 the da da in between just doesn't work. So you can't do da 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 da. You only can like do like da 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 da, or you just really cut it da da da. You have to use it like super different because it sounds it's it it's so sensitive against uh, of like every movement you do the right hand right yeah, yeah. if you just touch his touch a string <coughs> somehow it it tends to get out of control and you have to you have to figure out a way a playing style a new playing style to to make actual actual things happen and, and this songs in it yeah this makes the guitar that you're used to to like a totally different instrument yep of course for for the actual production later we will just as a backup, we will set up like a normal amplifier, uh, right? J just just uh, as an addition, which is not going to be heard while we're recording. We're just recording it to have it, just in case yeah. in the mix. Sometimes we think like, no, it's, it does not sound fat enough, or we need a little more classic, typical rock ingredient here. But it's not going to be the main thing. And this is one of the things which makes it really interesting. Yep. We also limited the use of um, strings to only four voices and um, no violins. It's only two violas and two cellos, which makes it super interesting. And it's yep. gonna be gonna be recorded with real instruments. Yeah, things like that. Things like that, and the whole. We did it again that we had, well, as we said, a songwriting camp and we had like working groups every day, different people together or almost every day, different people together. Yeah, we made a plan beforehand. Right. So, so it wasn't just like, like, uh, what, what, how do you say, gewürfelt? It wasn't random. Yeah, we, 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 we weren't rolling the dice here. It yeah. was like, yeah. There were certain wishes of everyone, like, I want to write together a song with this guy or this guy, so we tried to right do it and, way. and everyone or I think everyone brought ideas or had like things in his head mo mo most what of them, he yeah. wanted to try. I remember the session I had with Benny. He was like, either we go um, a route where what we both know, like where we feel safe. The, like the last time that well, when was under when we wrote under the sun that is a, what was, was a song and the songwriting where we felt safe and what we were doing was like yeah we know we know that the stuff you listen to right we know so. that um, or we do something completely different that we can't do at all so Benny and I started out writing with a church organ like sampled church organ. And no one of us is really fond of playing a MIDI piano or something, so we just try to make it happen somehow. And that's where that one song Not came us. <laughs> And that's where that one song came out. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Is, is it the one with the weird pitch? The weird yeah. pitch? Yeah, yeah. We're like, yeah, okay, yeah. How, how are we going to do that later when the organ is, is recorded in a real church? Because we're going to do it. Should we bend the pipes? <laughs> and then bend it back yeah. every time. Yeah. No, 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 no. There, there's a way to do that later. You right, but the, crea the, stuff the, later, but. the cre creativity that was somehow there in in doing something that we didn't know at all was completely new. So that was really cool. What I remember, um, I did not come with one genuine demo like I actually do. Actually, I come with lots of songs like, hey, here's everything. Actually, everything is kind of done. Let's try to find a way to make it fit to Lord of the Lost or the whole album concept. This time, I only had like really super tiny uh, mobile phone <laughs> notes, audio, uh, audio notes. So which like 10 seconds of bull crap recorded in the car somewhere. But if you have a an ear for these kind of things, you can totally hear like the gist of the whole song here. So and this is how we, I think this one song we started was like, hey, I got this thing here. Yeah, yeah we, we wrote a song of you just talking into your phone. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, 
but 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 it, it was so brilliant because I showed it to P and he was like totally understanding what was going on and it was actually this just this one part and then we kind of came up with the rest within it felt like 20 minutes it might yeah. have been like one and a half hours but <laughs> here you come back to the um, Pareto principle again I don't know if you guys are familiar with Pareto it's, it's Pareto P-A-R-E-T-O Pareto says um, that in the first 20% of the time of creating something, you achieve 80% of the whole thing. And, and the rest, what's coming, like the, the, the other 80%, you just achieve the 20% that's, that's missing. Yeah. So, and this song was like the perfect example for that. Everything was going like so fast and it was yeah. just done within, I think, less than an hour or something. And then we just had to work on the details. True. And I have the feeling a lot of sessions went like that. Like the session you had with Eike, the session I had with Benji, somehow it was like he br he brought that kind of folky song, it's like Irish folk song, it's like very singer songwriter ish. But since we were so aware of the elements of what we need for that album, it's like let's put that into this instrument, let's put that there, double that part. Da, 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 and all of a sudden it was a song and yeah well now we need yeah, but lyrics because he showed me the idea for that song a couple yeah. of weeks before and I was like I, the song is killer it's mm. just like the super wrong genre yeah. so, so, so we basically had to cover it yeah we covered the song in, in our way so, so and it, it, it was the same with some, some other th songs ideas someone came up with so it's like you have the concept of an album, like things you want to do, and you know the things you're not doing, so you just have to kind of cover yourself within the boundaries that or within the frame that you have set up for the whole thing. Yeah, true. And even class, although he's not saying anything, he was part of the whole. Just listening is quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, we didn't know what the others were doing in their camp, so. Yeah, the, the, this is what, we, what we've done, like every night at like seven, we were like, okay, we gather all together in the kitchen and we set up a little um, station there where everyone could put laptops or like MP3s, whatever. And then we were all sitting around and listening to the demos with like super funny demo vocals because when I'm not in a, <laughs> when I'm not in a team, some of the other guys has to do the demo vocals. I remember mm. Corvin always doing <laughs> da, 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 da. Da da da, he always does the super cute da 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 vocals. Yeah. But it's it's funny for like three seconds and then you're I don't know, overhearing that. You get it. So you, so you yeah. get what's what's the call. <laughs> yeah, and then we, And then we were discussing and there was sometimes sometimes it was pretty hard because people were like, No, I really don't get this part and I don't like this or I don't like that, but no one was ever offended because we were right. all like Knowing that we have to find a, yeah, that we have a goal here, right? A common goal, and <coughs> sorry, hmm. so it was great. So, so the next morning, those things were like, I don't know, corrected, or, or we already knew, okay, maybe this song is not gonna make it, or whatever. But for me, the hardest part was after we had all demos like on the same kind of level to decide which songs have to go mm -hmm. and which not and then telling and it, it was like one of the best moments for me when when i told you guys hey i made a plan i think these songs they should go or go to another band or something and let's keep those and everyone was like yeah, yeah. i was like oh god oh god because <laughs> this is when when the discussion begins so early that one is like what this song has to go that's the biggest fucking hit and you and you don't feel it, damn. So yeah. this was like, whoo. Trying to find a compromise when it's just, a, when it's a song that is completely, kind of completely cut. Well, there, there was really, hard. until now, there was really no compromise uh -oh. at all. No. And we won't, I think there won't, will be just a few compromises on that album. It will be to the... There's always like 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 detailed stuff. Yeah, but it will you know, just be... I 
But it was the same on Thornstar. We had we we did not make any, we did not have to make any compromise right. there. Not right. as far as I remember. Well, if there's something that we think or it's like this has to be there, this has to be. I don't know how we achieved like the video idea we had in the car back from the video shoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. um, <laughs> it's like this has. I don't know how we're gonna achieve it, but this has to happen. Yeah, we have some really great video ideas. It's so weird that Swan Songs 3 just came out and it, for me it feels like that's one year ago. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and that's, that's not... When did it come out? Not even one month ago. Uh, not even one month eight ago. 8th of August. Crazy. 7th. 7th of August. Really. Uh, Crazy. Yeah. Hello. It's almost a month. Almost a month ago. Yeah. Almost a year, a month ago. Crazy. Okay. We we have some serious questions. Um, what? And I I think I I want to re I want to read them because uh, we got this email and it's three questions, and I think we should all try to answer them. Uh, thanks uh, to Janet for sending the questions. Um, can a musician or artist ignore social, political, religious, and other changes in the world? If we can, or? can a musician? I think it's also meant like can or should a musician ignore mm -hmm. these kind of things. It, that's that's actually an interesting topic because we have this we've been discussing that a lot. Mm. So what's your thought about that? I think kind of yes and no depends also on the topics of what happens in the world, or if it like if it influences an artist, or if an artist in general has a special approach on things that happen right and uh, I think this question uh, reminds me of a Taylor Swift documentary I've watched and where she, she I mean Taylor Swift is like, like this country girl gone pops like larger than life pop star and she never had a political standing because it didn't fit her image because she's that kind of cute girl that sings very nice songs which are about feeling good and sometimes heartbreak and all the boys she dated. I've never heard one single song of her, it's crazy. I, I, might, I yeah. might know all of them, but I never actively heard them. Right, and no. the, they don't hurt, the songs don't hurt anyone, no. kind of. But when there was the first election where Trump was nominated for oh, yeah, president, she, standing, yeah. she said, I don't want this. And all in, that's in that documentary, all of her agents and whatever said, no, you can't. You can't make a political uh, uh, statement. And she was like, I have to. Oh. So I think it's not a question of image or if you fit that image of being political. It's more like a question of are you willing to maybe sacrifice a few fans to actually have a standpoint and like an opinion. For me, it's also... It can't be answered in general because I think there are artists in the world that really, that, that like don't read newspaper at all mm -hmm. in their private lives, really don't care about inner or outer politics at all. So how should they right. say something? Yeah. And then it de also depends maybe on, you know, some forms of art or entertainment are really only there to kind of distract people from everyday yeah, problems. True. If everyone's like, it's just talking about the shit going on. Where, where's, where's the people that, I don't know, give us a good good mood. So I think right. it's totally legit to for some artists to not mention this at all because they have like a different purpose with the art they're doing. They, they are like the counterpart, you know. Yeah. But for me, I must say, I'm kind of sensitive about that question because we've been told by many... No, not many, by, by, by some fans in comments or, or private messages like, hey, you're a musician, you have to f fucking sing your songs, but shut the fuck up about politics and stuff. <laughs> Where I'm only like, my reaction is always the same. Like, okay, if I'd be a lawyer or a baker or working at a gas station or whatever, I'm allowed to post my political standpoint by political point of views on Facebook mm -hmm. but just because my job is being a musician I'm not allowed to do that so I think I'm both sometimes I think 
all these things have does do not have their space. For for instance, Thornstar. Yeah. There was a record where no political whatsoever meaning would have had a place because it's like it's a concept True. thing. It's like I don't know, Lord of the Rings. You know, you don't have to put any anti Trump or anti whatever thing in there. True, it doesn't fit the thing. But for the next thing we're doing, the German song with that other German band, that's a perfect place to. There's not a single line in that song that's not political. No. So. Not a single pun. Each word yeah. hurts on a level or yeah. makes you laugh or makes you, I don't know. Yeah. Makes you, you don't know if you want to laugh or cry. So I think it's important to have, if, if you can, if you're educated enough, it's important to have a standpoint. I think it's just the choice of the artist. It is, yeah. If if it's for him important to not be political, it's as okay as he wants to stand up to yeah. uh, show his idea of politics. Or if he's against something and he has a voice and he wants to use it. And coming back to what I said, like it's a question of knowledge. I There are so many things I just read a little about and I'm like, what the fuck is going on there? But my knowledge about these things is so limited that I'm not standing up for that and or making a post or whatever because I, I can't cannot know about every you know aspect single war which is happening in Africa or whatever all the time to have the chance to give like a you know yeah. a, a, a validate meaning like like a point of view. So I think it's important. If you open your mouth, that you're not just talking bullcrap. True. I mean, it might be bullcrap to someone, always, but uh, you know what I mean. Actually, be able to state facts. Yeah. Yep. That's always good. Hard facts. Hard facts. Uh, the second question: What's your attitude towards those who are trying to keep a neutral position at a time? Okay, I think, I think we, we answered we just, that. Uh, and also the last one I think we answered, is it easy to sing about love knowing that somewhere around this planet bombs are exploding, many people are suffering? Okay, um, are you aware of your influence? Um, you know, we, we, are, we are not the kind of band which is doing like, like funny songs. I mean, not regularly, sometimes. Yeah. But I think it's important, um, as I just said, like for instance, Thornstar or just a love song, it's, it's important to also let music be a counterpart. Mm -hmm. Right. Not just to entertain, maybe just give you a good feeling or give you a different kind of melancholy which you just need or I don't know. So yes, it is easy because um, I cannot think about the world's problems like every second of the day because it would just fucking kill me. Right. And, and isn't so. it like if there's a big war uh, holding the whole world, then people need more entertainment in those times since there's then more funny stuff because people don't want to see or in movies or music they just need light entertainment because the world is so much in trouble mm -hmm. that entertainment is becoming counterpart or when nirvana came up when every every kind of music was only bubblegum and senseless yeah. people were tired and then a band like nirvana with so much tragedy yeah, and sadness and it, it, they were ready for it and if there's war all over the world people need funny entertainment to find their secret place beside that so it's a I question think. of balance yeah mm -hmm. I think so, so. Um, you have to deliver the counterpart of what's happening in the world you know this is this is what I these are actually this has always been the, the bands I like most bands that can be funny that can be emotional and bands that can be like super hardcore about criticism and all that kind of stuff, you know, like yeah. like one of my favorite German bands called Die Ärzte. They have it all. Yep. Mm. You know, or like like what I listened in the late True. late nineties, so many so like like Merrill Manson. Has it all, yeah. He he had it all. Like he had this weird, funny songs, he had rock and roll songs, he had like Love songs here, yeah, like serious topics. Guns N' Roses. Super critical. Same. Guns N' Roses. So I always liked bands that were like super versatile. So that might be like, you know, I I was a big fan of 
him for one or two albums, but then it became like super boring to me because it's like only love songs, only yeah. love songs, love songs, love songs, yeah. and they didn't get worse. So the, all the other other records, they're really good, but yeah. I, I couldn't listen to them anymore because the balance was missing. So yeah. Uh, and last question: Are you aware of your influence on other people? I don't know, and I'm trying not to be aware of it too much because I think it can lead to a paradigm shift when you're like saying things. Yeah, I I'm think it not can think make you it. and can shut you up if you sometimes when you shouldn't shut up, so. or or it can make you arrogant or yeah. like. I don't know. I don't think I'm, we're fully aware of it, and that's fine. Yeah, I just got the same question a couple of days ago on Facebook. Like, what do you think when people like are sexualizing you? And I was like, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not really aware of that because I don't see myself that mm. way, and I don't really care. I, I do not mean that in a negative way. I mean in the most positive way that I, I don't care. And I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And so because I don't see myself as being a rock star, although we we might be rock stars in the world of some people, but I really don't see myself. Like yeah. That. True. And I think that's a good thing. Of course, I have my it, rock. It, I have my rock star moments on stage. Everyone. On stage, I, to I totally see myself as a rock star. I need sure. to that. It's part of the feeling. So sure, you gotta embrace that position in places where it's needed and appropriate on stage. Yeah. And appropriate, but as you said, we I, I agree, I don't feel as a rock star or whatever. I, I still blush. <laughs> it's, oh, it's weird when someone, I actually don't like that. I still blush when someone's coming up to me at the supermarket. It's mm. like, oh. and it's mm. happening like a lot of times, but still like, okay. Mm. So I, that, I think that's a good thing. It keeps you down to earth somehow. True. Um, one more question. Um, it's about how do we choose or who is choosing our special guests slash support bands on tour, bands we're touring together with, but not when we're like touring with a bigger band, when other we're small headlining bands, and when we're headlining and, yeah. I mean with Scarlet Dawn. Scarlet Dawn, like we're just Scarlet like, that. <laughs> This is some kind of Lord of Lost offspring. Right. So people just had to endure it if they wanted or not. Right. It was, <laughs> we, we like Scarlet Dawn. We think they have to get the maximum exposure that we can give them. And also it's very convenient as well, I think, when they're touring with us because it's basically the same that would the same people that would go with us either way. So it makes it easier for everyone. And But the music, I'm a big fan of the music. Me too. But the general thing is when, uh, general thing, when bands want to tour with us, they write mails to our label and they, they tell them, write to our booking agency, then they write to our management, the management tells them, write to our booking agency. So it's all being, It's always lead to our booking agency, mm -hmm. and then they come like, "Hey, you need a support for this and that tour, and some some bands road." And then of course we we we're, we're checking that, and if we like something a lot, we're actually taking them on tour. But there's like there's really like so many bands, and it's always so hard to say no because the thing is, most of them just ask much too late. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I've seen that you're going on tour in five months, so there's still enough time to get a support slot. Can we go on tour with you? And we're like, yeah, but that tour was planned like right. one and a half years ago. So Maybe ask for next year or so. So if you're in a band and you're like, I want to play with Lord of the Lost, then I can already tell you that, okay, let's, let's keep Corona out of it. But if everything works fine, then we have no space for support till mid-22. So it's all it's all set. Yep. Actually. And but about the decision, 
you know, there's also the label who might come like, hey, we have this band on our roster and we'd really like to have them on tour with you. And um, so it's also, it's, it's always like so many things to to check. Some bands are coming like, hey, we want to go on tour with you and we give you a lot of money that we can do that. And then you have to count like, okay, can we earn something on the tour? How expensive is a tour bus? Do we need like someone to give us money so we, that we can actually afford a tour bus, maybe like having the other band on the tour bus with us, which means like we have to book a bigger tour bus, mm -hmm. which is more expensive. So it's also sometimes a question of money. But in the end, the decision is ours because no one would ever tell us you have to take this band. Because right. we have to travel with them in the end. Right. We want to have, have a good to company. For us. Yeah. We want to have good. It is our tour, and, and you're our audience. So we have to really feel well with them. We have to like it. And I think she was already also asking, like, were there like negative things? Okay, well, of course we can't say any names here, but I'm just trying to remember negative things with other bands. It's quite rare and probably not so important, the negativity. No, actually, I mean, there were some, I remember some situations with bands where, oh yeah, I, re I actually remember some. I need, I need to uh, write these down for you because I can't mm. tell you the names but we had okay. some situations uh, oh yeah another one um, uh -huh. that one <laughs> oh yeah you know right I don't know um, Wait. I can't, I can't Read your handwriting right now. You can't? Uh, ah, ah, ah. Ah, his um, name was? This is his last name. Ah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, we, we, you know, it's, it's so tempting to just... Yeah! Ah! Right, now we're talking. So now we're done. We when, have, al when alcohol changes people. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. No, 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 and not no. only alcohol, alcohol... Cocaine, <laughs> depression, yeah, alcohol again, groupies yeah. slash alcohol slash drugs. <laughs> so, so we we had yeah. weird things like like the tour management coming to us like, hey guys, we we're having a problem. There's this one guy from the other band shagging that one girl on the toilet but we the club was already closed and we have they found drugs and blah 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 and we're like oh dude so yeah we all, we always had this kind of things but just like very 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 rarely that's that's because we get to choose ours. yeah <laughs> but, but, but we but try to know, keep them under control and it usually works yeah yeah but you know the thing is um you choose a band because you like the music and you personally maybe know one or two people of the band. And then they're coming, bringing musicians which are in the band which you might don't know, and crew members which you might don't know, and their yeah. problems. And some people people change, like, very fast. Especially under the influence of stuff. Yeah. So you, you don't know the whole band all the time. And sometimes, you know, sometimes people are like super wasted, but super nice. I remember the one time where, where we had this band on the bus. And every morning there was this one guy of the band lying still <laughs> yeah. like that in the nightliner on the floor with like his mm. feet on the seat and like... His face on the ground, but he was one of the nicest guys. Yeah, yeah, he was he, also puking yeah, puking his, himself. Puking yeah. himself, lying in, I, I don't know... Um, Peanut flips, but he was the nicest guy. He did not hurt anyone. I mean, right. he, he came. He to hurt that. himself. Yeah, and he was <laughs> he was late every day, and we also had these things like with that same band, already thirty minutes on the highway, and then someone stumbling down the the, the stairway from the upper part of the bus to the lower part of us like, hey guys, 
Are we already on the road? Yeah. I have that Russian friend of mine, that girl up there. Can we let her out somewhere on a gas station? She was like, you have a girl on the bus? It's yeah, not that's not good, right? It's not allowed to have like, <laughs> like girls. On, okay, that sounds sexist. Okay, if the girls are in the band or on the crew, so it's not allowed to have like... Somebody. Sex partners on the bus. When we're driving. When we're driving or like when you're not asking like, can I have a guest on the bus? And we're like leaving that girl out in the gas station. Uh, I hope she found her way home. Yeah, me too. So She's still searching. <laughs> <laughs> so we, and this leads me to one thing I'd like to clarify here. We sometimes read things like, yeah, you know, I just wanted to tell I'm not a groupie. Or people like, hey, oh, I'm such a groupie. I usually don't do those things. Please. No, no, no. no. It's about people that mixing up the term groupie and Oh, band. yeah. Okay. We just, I just want to explain. You might also Google it, but a fan is someone who adores the music. It's a fanatic of the music. Yeah. Like, I'm a fan of Roxanne. So, a groupie is always... It was mostly connected to, like, like female persons, but it actually can be everything. Uh, it's mostly connected to people that follow the band on tour and offering sexual services also to the band and the crew, kind of like right. starting with crew members, working their way up. To Trying to get away into the inner circle. Yeah. yeah. The, the girl in the movie School of Rock puts it very briefly. Groupies? Those are cheap sluts that sleep with the band. That's what she says. Yeah, or, um, <laughs> or Almost Famous. It's also, it's also groupy. Have you seen that? It's a great movie. Almost Famous. Oh, I haven't seen it's that. It's re really cool. It's also like a gr groupy movie. Um, so, I'm a fan of Roxette, but I'm not a groupie of Roxette because I never had sex with Per Gessler or Marie Frederiksson. But I'm a fan. Yeah. So, that's this. What's the time? It's late. Should we call Nick? <laughs> ah. to, to let him have the last word. Yeah, maybe just like switch to German for a moment for your German listeners to let him explain some of our weird German words that we call yeah. querulanten. Let's see if he's already in bed. Hmm. Nick, Nick, Nick. Where is he? Damn it. Why, why is he not in my favorites? Nick. Says a lot. Yeah, totally. I got different numbers of him, damn it. Wir machen gerade einen Podcast und wollten wissen, ob du in der Lage wärst, ein paar Querulanten zu erklären. Ach, bestimmt. Okay, das freut mich. Ähm, also, wo waren wir denn? <lacht> Gott, ich finde den ersten schon so gut. Also, <lacht> Krautbrötchen. <lacht> Na komm, sag es erst. Brautkrötchen? Ja, genau. Ja, das, das ist doch so eine Mitgift, oder? Weiß ich nicht. Mitgift. Weiß ich bei, nicht. Bei Heirat. Mhm. Krass. Ja, das kommt aus dem Mittelalter. Okay, wie immer. Ja, natürlich, kommt ja alles aus dem Mittelalter. Okay. Also Zeit kommt aus dem Mittelalter. Ja, Akropolis, 3000 Jahre, wir haben doch erst 2011. Genau. Ja, genau, genau. Das ist aber eine andere Geschichte. Okay, ähm, danke. Äh, Reiseleiter. <lacht> Leisereiter. Ja. Mhm. Ja, das ist ähm, äh, jetzt zu Corona-Zeit äh, sind ja auch diese ganzen Dressur-Geschichten äh, und so 
äh, ohne Publikum. Entsprechend werden die nicht angefeuert, die, die Reiter auf ihren Pferden. Und deswegen sind das dann die leise Reiter. Kommen Sie aus dem Mittelalter? Nee, das habe ich auf NTV gesehen. Ah, okay. Das ist ja neu, das gibt es ja seit Corona. Ja, genau. Ähm, Handsenker. Sandhenker? Ja, genau. Das kommt aus dem Mittelalter. Ja. Ja, aber aus der Wüste. Aha, und was ist, was man genau macht, ein Sandhenker? Der, der hat genauso Leute gehängt wie alle anderen Henker auch, aber hier gab es halt nicht so viel Sand bei uns in Mitteleuropa und deswegen waren das ganz normale Henker und so ein Sandhenker, der musste halt damals schon, weil eben viel Sand seinen Galgen äh, auf dem Sand bauen. Das ist interessant. Vielleicht hat er ihn auch aus Sand gebaut, das weiß ich aber nicht. Das ist krass. Hm. Ja, ja. Wie, wie bei Spider-Man 3. Ist das da so? Ja, nein. Also. Ähm, Bartreiniger. Äh, was? Bartreiniger. <lacht> Bartreiniger. Rad, Radbeiniger? Ja, genau, ein Radbeiniger. <lacht> ja. Ja, ist, also also äh, ein Radbeiniger ist äh, jemand, der... Sex on Wheels. Man, man, kennt, das ja, man kennt das ja, wenn man, wenn man zu jemandem sagt, boah, Alter, der hat aber O-Beine. Ah. Also ein Radbeiniger, das ist halt echt rund, ne? Also ich habe neulich einen Hund gesehen, der hatte statt Hinterbeine hatte der so Rollen. Nee, also ich glaube im Tierreich heißt das dann ganz anders. Also Radbeinig ist schon auf Menschen bezogen. Okay. Okay. <lacht> <lacht> Gut. Äh, Rock King. Hm. Was nochmal? Rock King. Rock King? Ja. Das habe ich schon mal irgendwo gehört. Okay. Aber okay, dann habe ich noch einen letzten für dich. Der ist auch nicht so leicht. Ähm, Wuppertal. <lacht> Tupper Wahl. Ja. Ja, äh, jede gute Hausfrau stand vor dieser Wahl. Vor diesem Wahl, meinst du? <lacht> vor diesem Wahl. Dem, ja, ja, natürlich. <lacht> vor dem Tupper Wahl. Ja, okay. Gut, ja, ja dann sind ja deine, also deine Ausführungen sind heute nicht so detailliert wie sonst. Enttäuscht mich ein bisschen. Nee, das liegt an der Uhrzeit. Hast du schon geschlafen? Nee, nee, so weit war ich noch nicht. Krass. Okay. Hast du noch masturbiert? Deswegen konnte ich auf Cockring jetzt auch nicht so gut antworten. Ah ja, verstehe. Dann mach... Ich peinlich berührt. Oh ja, lieber peinlich berührt als gar nicht berührt, ne? So. Oh, ist doch ein schönes Lord zum Sonntag, oder hatten wir das schon? <lacht> Was? Hatten wir das schon als Lord zum Sonntag? Lieber peinlich berührt als gar nicht berührt? Ich glaub nicht. Okay, kann, kannst du mal in die Gruppe schreiben? Ja, lieber peinlich als gar nicht berührt. Wir haben nämlich für euch da draußen, wir haben eine WhatsApp-Gruppe, die heißt das Lord zum Sonntag, wo wir den ganzen Schwachsinn sammeln. Und ihr wart gerade live an der Entstehung eines Lord, Lordes zum Sonntages. Eines, wie sagt man? Egal. Vielen Dank, Nick. Äh, ich ich wünsche dir noch viel Erfolg die nächsten Tage mit allem, was so ansteht. Ja, mal gucken. Ja, Nick, das war viel jo. Spaß. Und, ähm, und lass dir mal einen wachsen, ne? Ja, ich lass mir mal einen stehen. Bis denn. Tschüss. Tschüss. Warte mal, nee. Nick muss die letzten Worte haben in diesem Podcast. Ach ja. Ich oh. muss die letzten Worte. Oh. Ja, sag mal. Jetzt, Am besten in Englisch. Okay. <lacht> ähm, äh, äh, ich, jetzt bin ich aber echt überrumpelt. 